Hello and welcome back to the second part of our secure SFTP server setup. Um, in our last video, we basically set up our SFTP server on our Linux machine and we used a user called Tom to connect to it and it all worked well. But in this video, we're going to have a quick look on how to um, protect our SFTP server if it would be on the web. So if you're hosting this SFTP server not on your virtual machine like I do on this Santa machine here, you probably have it on Amazon Web Service or any other cloud provider and you're wanting to uh, limit the number of brute force attacks that people are obviously going to attempt against your server and we're going to have a look on how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is to connect to our server called Santa using SSH and um, the only tool we're going to need in this video is IP tables which is probably already installed on your a virtual machine or computer and it's basically a Linux firewall and what we're going to do to prevent any SSH brute force attacks on our system um, is to basically just to limit them and we're going to do that by um, using the IP tables command in the uppercase I for the input chain for the um, protocol TCP for the destination port 22 or whatever other port it is on your um, server you might also want to use the minus lowercase i to restrict it to a certain interface which I'm not going to use um, we're using the m for the mangle the state of the package <coughs> and we're going to want to mangle any package in a new state which are of um, connection attempts that are um, attempted but not yet authenticated. If I'm not totally wrong, if so, please correct me. And also the recent. Um, and we're using this minus minus set here. So if that worked well, you're obviously doing something right, and we can just press the arrow up to repeat that command. Um, and here we're going to limit the SSH attempts um, by using this built-in method that is called update. So what we can do is we also want this manual recent state. Um, we also want this minus minus update and we want minus minus seconds 60 and we want a minus minus hit count Four sounds good, and anything above that is going to be dropped. So that's pretty long command, but it's basic, basically pretty simple. We're going to have a look at any um, TCP package that's arriving on port 22, and we're going to have a look at its state, and if it's new and recent, um, we're going to count in our uh, IP tables in for how many connection attempts are going to happen within one minute and if that's more than if that hits four which means it sh has to be um, basically three maximum it's going to be dropped by the firewall so any unknown person that is trying to authenticate has a maximum of three attempts in one minute to authenticate or see you later um, that's basically what you need to protect your SSH. Um, securing SFTP basically means protecting your yeah, SSH server. And we've already done that pretty well by um, setting the SSH connect the SSH settings in a way so not everybody could authenticate. But let's have another look at the SSHD config file. We're going to edit it, ssh, sshd, underscore config. And what you could obviously do is comment out a few of these authentication method methods if you don't use them, like permit the root login. Probably a bad idea anyway to let the root user connect to the SSH server. Um, 
public key authentication should be enabled you might want to disable password authentication completely uh, which you could obviously do it's um, disabled by the default but in case you haven't done that yet definitely you should do that um, but um, make sure you've cre um, yeah you've created a personal key file and added it to the authenticated keys file before you're yeah cutting yourself off the SSH access and what we also have done is in within this subsystem SFTP section we've only match the group FTP access so using the SFTP server only the spe specified users can access the server anyway. You can also use match users to not allow a full group um, access to the server or create a second match group section or second match user section that has a different ch root directory with let's say only uh, a read-only mounted file system or something like this. So you can experiment with this but um, basically the most efficient way to protect the server is just to use this IP tables method and if you're having an outbound firewall as well like on Amazon Web Services where the cloud provider allows you to um, open firewall ports or not to specific IP addresses you can of course also restrict it to your internal IP address if you have a fixed one or whatever else network wise you can do in that regard. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was a little bit helpful and leave you can leave any comments or suggestions if you have uh, obviously below this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.